I was reading an article, and this is slightly less of a social issue, um, but I felt it was worth talking about since, you know, gaming has been my passion for most of my life. My first gaming system was the Atari 2600, and I remember doing the hyper jump from the 2600 to the NES, and eventually a Sega Master System, and a Genesis, and a Super Nintendo, and I've been very fortunate to experience almost every console that has ever come out, and have very favorable opinions of almost all of them. But, uh, this new crop of gaming, not to mention the gaming industry and the way that it's conducting business, is just stomach-turning. They're basically, because they figured out that they got us pretty much by the balls, that they can charge what they want, do whatever business practices they want, and no matter how much dissent there is, they will get their money anyways. It sickens me. It should sicken most of you because it's a direct insult to you guys in general. But here's the lowdown. New Xbox and PlayStation expected to hit $400 price point. Baird Equity Research puts it out there. While it's evident that this year's E3 is going to be something special, the announcement of a of the new Xbox and PlayStation could just be as reasonable as reasonably the announcement of the new Xbox and PlayStation could just as reasonably occur before the Expo this June. In the meantime, there is plenty of rumors going around, as reported by Gaming Industry International. Baird Equity Research has come out with the 2013 Consumer Electronics Show with the belief that these consoles will cost between $350 and $400 in the U.S., the firm also offers an estimated launch window of both consoles, PlayStation being in October with Xbox in November, with the caveat that there may be early production issues with Sony's PS4, according to Baird Collins, uh, Baird's Colin Sebastian. Our checks suggest that the next-gen console hardware will be largely built from off-the-shelf, high-end PC components, along with hybrid physical digital distribution models, enhanced voice controls and motion sensing, connect integration with the new Xbox, and broadband or broad multimedia capabilities. He says that moreover, a PC-based architecture, Intel chips in the case of Xbox, should have a number of advantages over custom developed silicon. For one, the learning curve for the software developers will be shorter than completely new technology. Second, the cost of production and retail price points should be lower than prior console launches. Third, it will be easier to build online services around PC chip architecture, including flexible business models, free-to-play subscription, and multimedia over-the-top content offering. I wouldn't be surprised. This would make Nintendo Wii the cheapest priced one on the market, unless you factor in the deluxe model, and even then, they may still be cheaper. Who knows, we may even see a early price drop of the Wii U, though I would doubt it, since they're already apparently creating them at a loss. Now granted, Wii U has actually outsold PS3 and Xbox 360, not combined but it's outsold each one respectively, uh, at least in terms of the U.S. Now, worldwide, who knows where that's at just yet, since uh, most of the uh, polling places generally tend to look to the U.S. in terms of sales. Wii U's not doing horribly, but it's not doing great either. The fact that, uh, compared to the Wii at the same time uh, this year, the fact that they're still on shelves, the fact that uh, there's actually not a lot of people who are buying uh, Wii U's, the fact that uh, a 500,000 plus waiting list for GameStop turned out to only end up with 320,000, you know, units in sale. 
I'd like to say that, you know, Nintendo will still cl could clinch this based off of price point alone, but given the weaknesses of the Wii U that I've talked about, uh, you know, quite a lot on my, la on my old channel, because I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted that now my game system has to have extra peripherals. It's not just enough for it to have a controller or a specially built control system now. Now I've got to worry about memory systems. Now I've got to worry about online, ver you know, digital versus physical. I've got to worry about this. I've got to worry about that. All the headaches that I never had to worry about before. And now Sony and Nintendo, or Sony and Microsoft want to enter into the fray. And if Microsoft hasn't learned from what was ultimately a botched release of the 360, then they're not going to be any good on the market. So there's not a lot, considering how Nintendo's not learning from their mistakes, and you've got Reggie revving up the PR engine, trying to act as if everything is fine, if in fact it's better than fine, it's just dandy. This, this industry is out of touch. It's out of touch with your usual consumers, and then when they try to make a consumer-friendly, economy-friendly machine, it ends up being a bigger insult than if you just bought the, the big deluxe model. Because, to be honest with you, to get what the deluxe model has with less storage, you're going to be spending the same amount, and therefore the economics is not in favor of their basic unit. And then they're wondering, gee, why can't I sell the basic Wii U unit as much as we're selling the demand for the, ba for the deluxe units? Yeah, big mystery there. I'm sorry that I sound cynical, it's just, I'm coming off of the PSP, which has many of the, or PS Vita, excuse me, that has many of the same problems and weaknesses that the Wii U has. And when they are, when Nintendo's like, oh yeah, you know that selling point that we made a big deal about, that no matter what game you had in the Wii U, if somebody wanted to watch TV, you could still play it on your gamepad? Yeah, turns out we're not much better than Sony on that. Some games will have it, but we're not going to require it. Just like how you introduce a 3D DSi and then decide, eh, we're not going to require people to create 3D games for our 3D system. Now, I'm not saying that I'm trying to poop all over the people who literally cannot look at any kind of 3D on the 3DS without getting sick. But it doesn't take a genius to see people who are constantly crying for what we're about to get with the Pokemon titles going, why did I buy a 3D system if you're not going to give me a 3D Pokemon? But the, the point is they're, they're grossly mismanaging their systems. Uh, you, you know, look at Sony with the PS Vita. Yeah, it's maybe going to get some killer apps out there, but they're, they're, some of their killer apps don't last very long, and the touch controls absolutely hinder the gameplay at time, and the control mechanics like the back touchpad. I don't have much faith in Sony, and Microsoft's given me even less faith to have in it in terms of the new PC, uh, new console, outside of the fact that they have the best, hands down, game developing uh, dev kit have out there. They are second to nobody in terms of how gleeful game developers get when Microsoft delivers their um, their kits. Because Microsoft has always had a PC hybrid console. What do you think the Xbox original Xbox was? It ran not unlike the uh, X, uh, not unlike the Sega Dreamcast on a Windows CE type of suite. That made it easier to translate everything. There wasn't such a big learning curve. It was a joy to work with, and the tools were all laid out for you. You didn't have, like, the, the War and Peace style manuals that Sony puts out every time they put out a dev kit. So now, I'm not really groaning as much about the devs out there groaning whenever PlayStation releases a new machine. When you find out how their dev kits are set up, it's now no surprise. But there comes a point to where it's like, I'm already out. I'm getting the Wii U, and even then, to a degree, it's because I've got friends who I could contact via the network and play with, with the newer 
networking that Nintendo's getting on board with that would make it worth the price and playing the games with my son like Pikmin 3 which I'm sure is going to be great because the last two Pikmin were great plus there's Nintendo Land I really think that me and Josh will get a lot of mileage out of Nintendo Land and have so much fun plus I've got a, a way to record our fun so maybe that'll become a, a part of my channel at some point but beyond that I have absolutely no interest not even second-hand, in buying a PS4 or a 360. I do want them to come out this year. I want them to come out this year. I want them to stop support for these old systems here, and I want to be able to just do whatever I want with my old systems that I have and not have to worry about new releases, newer DLC, newer headaches of, with the older systems that I just don't want to have to deal with anymore. Gaming has just become too bloated. And it's way too expensive of a hobby these days. That's not even factoring in collectibles and all the sort of stuff that comes with, uh, you know, being a hardcore gamer or what people consider a hardcore gamer since I hate that label. You can keep enjoying it all you want. I'm not here to try to piss in your Cheerios. I'm just simply saying that it might behoove you to take a look with eyes unclouded at where the gaming industry is headed and one, decide, is your hard-earned cash really worth this kind of headache instead of maybe voting with our wallets and forcing the gaming industry to make the reforms that it seriously needs? Reforms that favor us and still allow them to make money. Right now, they're just interested in making money. Forget the customer. I don't know about you, but I'm not okay with that. 